Okay, it looks like we are live. We're just going to wait a few moments to let everyone arrive into the program. If you're sitting out there um, and you're wondering about the handout right now, you can actually get the handout at officedynamics.com slash handout. Apparently there are some that are unable to download that. So if you're looking for the handout, we won't use it until a little bit later in the program, but you can get that at officedynamics.com slash handout. Okay, I'm just going to wait for a little bit. And again, if you're just tuning in for your handout, go to officedynamics.com slash handout. We won't use it until a little bit later in the program. Looks like there's a lot of people looking for the handout this morning. Okay, we just have a few more minutes. We'll let everybody get logged in. But we want to make sure that if you're looking for the handout, you can find that at officedynamics.com slash handout. Um, it's just a simple handout that we'll use a little bit later in the program as we follow along with some of Joan's tips. I know Joan is excited to get this program started this morning. She is very eager to speak with you about creating your professional development plan, and we will get started in just a moment. Okay. This is our first time using this technology, so we're just getting used to how this whole process works, so thanks for bearing with us as we prepare to get started. And again, one more time, if you're looking for the handout, if you are looking for the handout, you can find it at officedynamics.com slash handout. Okay, it looks like everyone is getting all checked in. This is exciting. I can see all of the attendees um, joining the room right now. So we are going to get started right on time. Well, welcome everyone to our first free webinar. This is our um, something special we're doing in honor of our 25th anniversary. We're doing a free webinar just for you every single month. So we hope that you will invite your friends and you'll come back month after month for a different topic every time. Today's topic will help you to create your professional development plan. I know there are a lot of you out there that are excited for this topic, so we are super excited to get started on it for you in just a moment. Your career is a work in progress. Whether you're climbing the corporate ladder or staying in your current position and wanting to increase your effectiveness. Before I bring you Joan Burge, there are a few things that I would like to cover with you. As I mentioned, this is our first time using this tool, so please be patient with us. We hope that everything goes well, um, but there will be a link at the end of the webinar if anything happens, um, so you will be able to watch the replay. But stay tuned if you can, because we have some exciting announcements coming up that you're definitely going to want to be a part of. And with all things new, there 
is going to be some some trouble and we did have some trouble with the handout link this morning hopefully that's all that there is but if you are looking for the handout you can access that at officedynamics.com slash handout and um, Joan will be using that a little bit later in the program so no worries if you don't have it yet you can always access it um, as we're getting started here and have it ready for later okay so nearly 1500 people have registered to join today's webinar and I mentioned this is our first time doing this so we may not get to every single question but we're gonna do our best and we do have a chat box in the side of this on the side of the screen on the right for you to enter in any questions that you may have and then during the designated Q&A time we will address those you are going to want to stay tuned until the end of the program because Joan will be sharing her secret weapon for career success and we'll have some exciting things to share with you to support you in 2015 as you build your professional development plan. Okay, I am excited to introduce you to your presenter for today, Joan Burge, and she is no stranger to many of you. But for those of you who don't know Joan, she is the founder and CEO of Office Dynamics International, which is a global leader in um, the administrative industry, which offers a broad range of solutions and provides high performance, sophisticated executive and administrative assistant training and coaching. And we are now in our 25th year of business. Joan is an accomplished author, professional speaker, consultant, and coach. Joan's never-ending quest to provide top-notch educational programs has earned the respect of premier clients like Cisco Systems, AT&T, Kindred Healthcare, Humana, Boeing, Sunoco, and the list goes on and on. Um, so without further ado, I would like to welcome Joan Burge, and we will hand it over to Joan. Wow. Well, welcome, everyone. I am just so excited that you are joining us today. I'm actually getting goosebumps as I'm watching people on the chat and seeing that you're coming from all over the world. Thank you so much. I see Australia and Spain and Canada. And I, I just can't even express how I'm feeling right now, knowing that we can all be connected no matter where we are in this world. Some of you are in the blizzard weather, so my uh, heart goes out to you while you're battling these, these winter storms. Um, you might want to move to sunny Las Vegas, actually, where we don't have to think about that. But anyway, I am very excited to be with you. Um, in this time, whether you're attending our live event or you're listening to the recorded version. So thank you very much. This is a robust topic and we have a lot of territory to cover. So I want you to make sure that you either have your pencil or pen and paper ready or your iPad or your laptop, just somewhere where you can take notes. As Jasmine said, the handout that we're going to use, it's actually going to be used later in the program when I go through a 10-step process with you. And you can access that handout at officedynamics.com slash, let me make sure, handout. So if you want to do that and, and catch up, but we'll be using that later, that will be great. What are we going to cover today? Well, we're going to talk about the different kinds of professional development plans because there are all different kinds of plans. We're going to talk about why you should get serious about building your plan, what you should put into your plan, and then at the end I'm going to go through a 10-step process that will ensure success and accomplishment. So let's get started. And by the way, I saw there was a question about is there going to be a recorded version of this program? Yes, there will be. So if you miss something, you can go back and play the recorded version. When you take control of your career by building a professional development plan, you become more confident. You actually create the job you want without having to leave your current position. You reduce your stress, you gain greater uh, job satisfaction, 
you are given more challenging opportunities and you are viewed as a leader. Before I get into the nuts and bolts of a plan, let's talk about the different kinds of development plans that are available and we're also going to take some polls as I talk about these different plans. So first of all, there is the big picture overview. If you just think about looking at the big picture of your professional development, what goes through your mind? And part of that is, am I committed? Are you kind of just halfway about it? Well, I think I should have a plan, or oh, I've heard I should have a plan, or are you the kind of person that is saying, I am committed to my professional development? So that's the big picture. The second type of plan are actual formal written plans. And there are three types that I want to share with you and we're going to take some polls during this segment. So first of all, there is a specific sketched out plan that organizations have for their employees. So I want you to think about this for a moment. We work with a lot of clients uh, larger organizations that have what they call either IDPs and that stands for Individual Development Plan or they'll refer to them as PDPs which is a Professional Development Plan and so what happens is all employees have to write these plans at the beginning of either the fiscal year or the calendar year and for assistants especially, what's happening now is the assistants actually have to write their plans and tie their goals up to fall in line with their executive's goals and the company goals. So this is serious stuff. And these plans are um, mapped and followed throughout the entire year. They are tracked. So let's take a poll right now. You'll go over to the polls. And what I'd like to know is how many of you work in an organization that has a formal professional development plan? And again, a plan that is tracked all year. So what you need to do is just vote. Um, I mean, select your answer and then select or click the vote button so we could see where everyone is. So under the polls, does your organization have formal development plans that are tracked annually? If you will click yes or no, and then again, be sure to click the vote button that is to the right, and then we can see what our results are. So I'll give you a moment to do that. I think it's working. Make sure, you, again, you click the vote button. So we're just answering the first question. Wow, look at that, everyone. This is amazing to me, and I am really excited to see 73% of our audience said yes. That is amazing. I didn't really expect those results, and I'm really happy to see it. So this is going to be a great program for you. 28% um, no, but that's okay because that doesn't mean you still are not going to write your own development plan. So thank you. The, the, so there's going to be three different types, so I just mentioned the one. Another kind of development plan is one that you would write when you attend a workshop or a training program. So for example, when I teach our world-class assistant um, workshop, our high-end boot camp, I have a professional development plan format that I give to my attendees. And as we go through the program, every time we end a segment, let's say on building strategic partnerships, we stop during the class and I have the attendees write what are their two or three top goals that they want to achieve within the topics we covered. And then they actually have to write out action steps. 
So let's say if one of their, one example might be to be engaged in the scope of my executive's work is one of their goals. Then they have to write what are the actions they are going to take to achieve that goal. So um, for example, they might say that I am going to request daily huddles with my executive. A second um, action that I would take is I'm going to initiate conversation with my executive so that I can learn more about the scope of my executive's work. And then with our plans, we actually use those for a 30-day follow-up. So after our attendees have come to the program, 30 days later, I send them an email asking about how they did on their plan. And later, you'll hear me talk about execution. We could have all these great plans and never execute. So it does us no good. The third kind of plan is you might just write your own plan. <laughs> okay, you come up with your own ideas, you write your own plan, you have your own template. And that could be anywhere from two pages to 20 pages. So I would like to take a poll. And that's our second question. Do you write your own development plan? And even if your company has a formal plan, I still would like to know, do you write your own plan? So again, um, click the yes or no. And I'm going to do it with you. And then let's click on the vote button. And let's see what our results say. Joan, there's a little bit of a delay, so in order to let a little bit more people take the poll, can we just wait a few moments and come back to the results so they can participate? Yes. Okay, great. So just wait for a couple minutes here or another minute? Yes, if you just want to go ahead and then let me know when you're ready to see the results and I can uh, bring those up for you. Okay, that sounds great. We'll do okay. that. So let's move on. Why focus on a plan. I gave you some benefits, but I'm going to give you five reasons why you're going to want to really bring this into the forefront. And I've got them jotted down because I don't want to forget any of them. Um, the first one, I love this one and I can't take credit for it. This is something I read on CNN.com. Um, there are two gentlemen who authored a book called The Startup of You. And their names are Reed Hoffman, H-O-F-F-M-A-N, and Ben, I hope I say his name correctly, Casnocha, C-A-S-N-O-C-H-A. And he, they say that our career is always a work in progress, which I have always believed, but what they say is we, our career should always be in permanent beta mode. Wow. And so the two points I want to make about that is they say that great companies are always evolving, and so should you. Um, so think about the companies that you work in, and I bet if you work for a great organization, your organization is not stagnant. It's always evolving. It's never in the final mode. Well, we should be the same way. The second point that they make that I really like is that when we think in a permanent beta mode, we acknowledge that we have bugs, and that's true. Um, I've been a career woman for 42, 45 years now, 20 years as an administrative assistant, 25 years in the training and learning industry, and I know I still have bugs that I have to work out. And if you, you have that in your mind, wow, all of a sudden your world opens up to you and you want to learn and you want to grow and you want to grasp everything you can. So that's the first reason. Your career is a work in progress. The second one, unceasing change. We live in constant change. You know that. But what's interesting is the pace of change has increase since the last 10 years ago, the last five years ago, even a year ago. I have assistants tell me that they don't even know from hour to hour what's going to happen and what's going on. That their own executives are changing their goals and their plans hour to hour. So if we don't develop ourselves, if we 
really don't keep growing and learning, eventually we're going to be left in the dust. The third reason is career success does not happen on its own. All the star performing assistants that I've met over 25 years have a plan. They have written plans, they assess themselves, they get feedback, all the things that we're going to talk about later in this program, that's what they do. So they don't wait for a chance to happen. And I was the same way when I was an assistant. I was very strategic about my career. I was a hungry assistant, I was an eager assistant, I wanted to work for vice presidents, I wanted to work for presidents and CEOs. And I made it happen. But you have to have that in your mind, you know, what is it that you want and you actually have a strategy and then you're going to follow the 10-step 10, 10 process that I'm going to share with you later today. Number um, four, the pace at which we work. We work in a supersonic world today. Um, it's surprising we're just not dizzy half the time. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that's how I feel sometimes. So we have to stay on the cutting edge. We have to be alert. We have to be sharp. We have to be focused. Number five, this is really important. Pay attention. Executives are setting higher expectations of executive assistance today. Yes. That's why Office Dynamics still exists 25 years later because executives and HR professionals and managers and CEOs call us and say, we have great assistants and you know what? We know they can do more. We're raising the bar. Help us. So the expectations um, today are much higher than they were 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. So now that I have convinced you hopefully of why you should get really serious about this in your career let's get into some of the nuts and bolts and I am going to approach this uh, in two ways so I'm going to be providing you a lot of great ideas and tips that really work that I know from experience and also from being in contact with thousands of administrative professionals and also I'm going to share with you great ideas and 10 proven steps from Chrissy Civic. So who's Chrissy? Well, we would have liked to have had her here today, but she was unable to join us. I have known Chrissy for several years. She's an outstanding, amazing person. She was an assistant for quite some time, and then she went into being a career coach, and she specifically coached administrative professionals in their careers. And we are very, very excited and proud to announce that we have now um, all of Chrissy's career changing tools, her ebooks and downloadables, and all kinds of great tools on our Office Dynamics website. We are very proud to add her wonderful tools to our repertoire. And Jasmine will tell you a little bit more about those later. So, are you ready? Here are some guidelines for all types of professional development plans. So we're not to the 10 steps yet, but you'll want to take notes on this, and I'll try to pace myself so that you can get all this great information. Number one, a plan should be well thought out. It isn't something that you do on the run or you even instant message yourself about or text yourself about. You might have ideas, but the idea is you really have to sit down. Now, what would that include? What would it look like? So, letter A within number one is what are your career goals for the year? So whether you're, and this doesn't mean that you're going to want to move up or move out or go into another position. Even if you're, you have been in the same position for eight years, as Jasmine has been with me for eight years, she always has new goals, new ways of growing. Letter B within number one. What does your executive expect you to accomplish this year? Have you had that conversation? 
and this is not about your performance review. This is not about what you can do to get a salary increase. This is solely about your professional development. What do they expect? Where do they feel you have strengths? And maybe how can you leverage those strengths? But also, what are the gaps they see? Executives have a perspective of you and your role that you do not see in yourself. They also know the great traits that you bring um, and great skills you bring that sometimes you don't know within yourself. Let her see within that. What skills do you need to develop to do your job more efficiently? So I'm sure technology is a part of that list, but think beyond technology because there are so many other skills you need. And that's what we teach. We teach the interpersonal soft skills, which 90% of the executives we survey put at the top of their list of what they look for in an assistant. Are you surprised that technology is not number one? Uh, let's see, it looks like we've got our poll, so let's go back for just a moment. Let's take a sidestep about do you track your, uh, do you write your own development plan and do you track it? 59% of you said yes, congratulations, you get a gold star. 41% said no. Wow. I hope after today, your no will turn to a yes. It is so important to set your goals for your life. And that involves your career. You are at your job more than 40 hours a week. You spend more time at work than you do anywhere else. And it's important to create the career you want and develop yourself. So let's go back to what I was discussing under your well thought out plan. Um, letter D, where do you struggle? What bogs you down? Or where do you feel less than knowledgeable? Um, for me, I, I do struggle with the technology, so I do have to work on that. Um, maybe numbers is a weak area for you. Maybe you struggle in a particular program. Maybe you struggle with handling conflict in the office. Maybe it's difficult for you to get up and speak in front of a group of your peers. So you also have to look at where do I have a hard time? And because that's holding you back. And that should be part of your plan. That you want to work on those areas, become better, you become more confident, you become more self-assured. And when you have confidence, you can do anything in the workplace. Letter E under this, the same point is where do you already excel but you want to fine tune? So while I've been in the speaking industry and doing wonderful for 25 years, I'm always fine, fine tuning my speaking skills, my presentation skills, my training skills, my communication skills. So remember, we're a work in progress. All right, let's see. We're still under some of the overall guidelines. And within number one, when you're thinking out um, that, that overview of your self-development, it's very important that when you're considering your skills, cover, there's three, fundamentals. Yes, your fundamentals are always important. I don't care how many years you you've been an assistant and how seasoned you are, it's actually more important today because of our supersonic world that we are excellent at being organized, that we're excellent time managers, that we focus, that we, all those basics, all those fundamentals. So don't um, neglect those. The second part in considering your skills is to look at advanced administrative competencies. So what do I mean by that? Um, those would be like persuasion skills, negotiation skills, and then also you want to look at broadly useful skills such as writing, general management, computer skills, anything that might transfer over to another job or position. So I'm looking at my time. I need to keep moving forward with you. Uh, we're still under the general guidelines. Number two, list six to eight areas that you wish to develop in the first half of the year. 
don't overwhelm yourself with a list of 20. More is not better. Less is more. So just think about six months out and what are six to eight areas that you want to work on. And then the third is when you're writing your development plan. This is really important. Make sure you get note of this. Use verbs and write in terms of behavior change. So we're supposed to use action words. What are we actually going to do? Not don't be vague, be very specific. So for example, I have some ideas for my world-class assistant program and about the being engaged in her um, executive's work. Here's an action step. Ask more questions as assignments are given to me. Attend executive staff meetings to better understand the scope of my executive's work. So that's what I mean. And number four, it's to monitor your progress at least monthly, if not bi-weekly. We get distracted by life. Um, and so we could have good intentions, but then we get distracted, which we'll talk about in the 10-step process. So now I'm ready to share with you these 10 steps that Christy Civic put together, which are very much in line in what I believe in. Um, this came from Christy's ebook about build your professional development plan. It's 121 pages long. <laughs> so she covers everything. So if you have the handout, we'll, if you want to get that ready, we'll fill in, I'll fill in the blanks for you. So the first step is self-assessment. And I touched on that already with you, but what Chrissy talks about is the SWOT analysis. That's capital S, capital W, capital O, capital T, and I imagine some of you have heard of that, and it stands for your strengths, your weaknesses, identify your opportunities, and identify threats. As part of your self-development, you also need to understand what values are important to you. Because as you move forward and you want to develop, there are going to be some sacrifices. In other words, you might value family time, but you want to take a course in the evening. Or you want to go back to college. Well, you're going to have to sacrifice some of that value or that family time. So part of your assessment is what are you willing to sacrifice temporarily to achieve your goals and what are you not willing to sacrifice at all. The second step is goal setting. Now those of you that have your plans I know you already know about goal setting but let's take it a step further. Chrissy talks about holistic goal setting. And what she says is career goals should not be set in a vacuum. Every part of your life impacts every other part. And I agree 100%. Consider all facets as you set your career, career goals. And I would add to that that you need to have discussions with your, your family members. In other words, when I had that goal of setting out and starting Office Dynamics 24, five years ago, and I had that vision, my husband wasn't very excited that I was going to give up a full-time job with benefits, okay? So, but I knew in my heart that was something I wanted to do, and I was so passionate about it. And I had to have that difficult conversation with my husband that this is what I want to do and here's why I want to do it and how do we work it out. So you've got to look at the big picture. If you have children, if you're a caregiver, if you're taking care of elderly parents, whatever it is, you've got to look at the whole picture and part of that picture is your wellness. So maybe you're one of those go-getters and you're, you've got goals everywhere. Well, don't burn yourself out either. So you also have to incorporate time to um, kind of wind down and regroup with yourself. Let's go on to number three. The third step Chrissy has is to research. 
And so, meaning that once you have your direction, once you know what you want to do, you have to start to do the research. And Chrissy says that can involve everything from researching job postings, which I thought was a really good idea. So if you're aspiring to another position, to really researching the classes. And I could talk to you about this for a long time, um, but I'm not. Basically, just do your research, do your homework, do those programs align with you. Do they align with the way you like to learn? Um, who's teaching the classes? And another great idea is to conduct informal interviews. All right, let's go on to the fourth step, which is decision making. You know, you've done your homework. And now it's time to make a decision as to what you're going to do, when you're going to get started, how are you going to track all of that. Not making a decision is making a decision. So if you choose not to do anything about your professional development, you have made a decision. Would you like me to repeat that? Not making a decision is making a decision. Let's go on to number five, action steps. So this is what I covered earlier with you, but I also pulled three areas from Chrissy's ebook that I thought were really good. So the first one is to get a mentor. I've had mentors all my career, and I still have mentors to this day. Um, mentors are wonderful because they've been through it. They can help you, they can save you time and energy and maybe money. The second is to pursue a certification or degree. We're actually going to have another webinar about certifications, um, I think, in a few months because that's a big topic today with administrative professionals in the corporate world. I know a lot of the corporate clients I work with are actually requiring two-year degrees now um, for an assistant to come into their organizations. So what happens to you that those of you who don't want to go back to school or you don't have degrees? So I have a lot to talk about with certifications because there are different kinds of certifications. Again, do your research, do your homework. Um, the third one Christy talks about is to join an association. So um, I know there aren't too many associations out there today for assistance, but there are some very good associations. Um, so again, do your research. And that's a great way to network and learn new skills and attend their educational programs. All right, I need to move on, I guess, to number six. Um, this is resources. That's important, and she refers to this as far as budgeting. So identify um, specific resources that are going to be required for each area of your plan. So is that time? Is it money? Um, maybe it's people. You've got to reach out to other people to help you. Number seven, this is important, you have to set deadlines. It is not good enough to say, oh, by summer, I'm going to be a better communicator. That is so vague. You need to write a date down. By June 15th, I am going to be more aware of people, people's communication styles and adapt my style so that I can be more effective with them. That is specific. Why do we set a target date? Because if you don't set a target date, you're just going to keep going and going and going, and a year from now, you'll be talking about the same thing. Also, our subconscious is amazing. When you set a target date, your subconscious works to accomplish that goal by that particular date. Now, yes, sometimes you go off track, but you don't give it up. You just extend your date. Number eight, this, I love that Chrissy mentioned this, and it's execution. So many of us have dreams and goals, me included, 
and we get all excited and we're all fired up. I bet after this webinar a lot of you are going to be fired up and you're going to say, yes, 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 I'm going to go get my plan ready. And then what happens to us, life happens, we get busy at work, we get overwhelmed, our families are pulling at us, and we lose staying power and we don't execute. So if you remember nothing else of today's program, I would remember that word. So what does that mean? I have four bullet points within that. Number one, your mindset. You have to be 100% committed to wanting to learn and grow and be a lifelong student. You can't be half in it and expect to see great results. Second, family support. Okay, I talked to you earlier about that. The third one, very important. What obstacles might you encounter? Obstacles could be family again. Obstacles could be finances. Maybe um, you want to attend some online courses. You want to attend, like maybe come to our conference. I can't tell you how many assistants have said, boy, I really want to come to your conference, Joan. I just can't do it this year. I have some good news for you. There was one assistant that I met last year. And this shows commitment and dedication. She told me that it took her 10 years to finally get to our conference. Wow. How many of us would have given up at the first or second or third no? And then the fourth point under execution, how do you stay motivated? I mean, a lot of people will ask me that. Motivation is an inside job. And you also need other people to help you get back on track. You need a buddy, what we call an accountability partner. So when maybe life does throw you off track, you have that person who comes back and reminds you that you wanted to accomplish this by this particular date, and you need to get going. So an accountability partner helps. Um, continue to feed your mind with, again, positive things that will keep you on track. Um, also, I just want to mention our Monday Motivators. That's our free weekly e-note. Every Monday I send something out to kickstart your week. I know how hard it is to get started on a Monday, so take advantage. You can sign up for that at officedynamics.com. Again, they're called Monday Motivators. Number nine is revision. You know, as time passes, we have to revise our plans. Things do happen, and um, maybe they happen to someone in our family, whatever the situation might be. I know it certainly has happened to me many times over the years, but it doesn't mean stop. It doesn't mean give up. You revise your plan for where you want to go from this point, and you continue to work the plan and follow all the other steps. And number 10 is tracking. Now, I know as assistants, you know what it means to track. You have to do that all the time. But let me tell you what Chrissy says. And she says that we have to identify patterns. I love that. She says that tracking helps us spot both negative and positive patterns in our behavior. So I know I have certain behaviors that stand in the way of me learning and developing and becoming more successful, and I have to be very cognizant. I also know the great patterns I have that make me hugely successful as far as developing myself, and so I want to repeat those patterns. Well, I see it's already, um, we've got 20 minutes left. We've covered a lot of territory in a short time, and I really hope you were able to get good notes and, and document all of this information. As part of our webinars um, for this year, we want to be sure and leave time to get your questions and address what you want to talk about. And I believe we already got some questions came in before our program. Um, please stay tuned. Don't leave, because at the end of this program, I'm going to share my secret weapon with you. But for now, I'm going to turn it over to Jasmine. Okay, Joan. Well, we do have some questions here, and there are a few that were similar, so I'm going to combine those for you. Um, the first one is, 
uh, a combination of Nancy and um, Joan at Cisco's question, and that's really about what are some of the key attributes um, and, and the top skills or priority skills that assistants are going to need in the 21st century to excel in their performance. All right, um, and I made notes on these because I thought these were wonderful questions and I don't want to miss sharing anything with you. So what I identified for key attributes in the 21st century, and these may surprise you, but this is where it's heading, emotional intelligence. And I recommend you go out to the internet and you look up emotional intelligence, the um, kind of Godfather of that is Daniel Goleman, G-O-L-E-M-A-N. In fact, I just got back from Utah last night. I taught a two-day world-class assistant program there. And in part two, that's exactly what we cover, emotional intelligence for assistants. So be sure to look that one up. Um, within that outstanding, the outstanding at the basics. Please, please, please do not forget your basics. Even if you've been doing this for 35 or 40 years, when we interview and I research and I talk to executives in their offices when no one else is around and I ask, what do you look for in a great assistant? What skills and attitudes and behaviors? Every single time we research or survey, do you know what comes to the top? The basics, the fundamentals. Also, um, flexibility, agility, Mind expansion is how I've labeled it. You've got to expand your mind. Also have the mindset of an explorer. You know, be adventurous. Don't be afraid. Go out there. Be an explorer. Look at new worlds. I also have focused. Be resilient. And then to answer the, the three to five priority skills, um, one is generational communication. We have more than four generations in the workplace. This is something I also teach in world class. This is really important. We need to get along. We need to know how to communicate with each other so that we can learn, which leads to the second, collaboration. Now, this is not the same as teamwork. Again, I encourage you, go do the research. Collaboration is different. Companies require employees now to do both. Also part of the, those top skills, leadership, better decision making, you need to be a change agent today, don't just sit and wait for change to come as assistance, you are in vital positions and you can be a change catalyst. And the last one I want to mention are what I'm calling sales persuasion skills. Assistants are not good at selling themselves, their ideas, their talents. You've got to go out there and you know be proud, and I don't mean bragging or being egotistical, but you have to let people know what you're capable of doing so they can leverage your talents, and then you're going to be a happier person. Okay. <laughs> I probably said more than three to five, but that was I couldn't narrow it down. Thanks, Joan. Those are great. I'm seeing a lot of stuff coming up in the chat box and a few people actually asked this question before the webinar got started as well and it's really pertaining to assistants that are feeling stagnant or they um, are getting ready to retire but they still want to stay in the workforce and they they want to keep growing and have a plan. What would you recommend for assistants that are in that phase of their life? Uh, for those of you that are going to be retiring which 85% of our assistants are at that age or stage of life that they can retire actually right now if they wanted to do that, but many are still going to wait a few more years. And I've talked to some of these assistants. One, I'm glad to hear that you want to grow and learn. Don't ever stop because you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. You might have this great dream that I'm staying at this company for five more years, eight more years till I retire. There are no guarantees. Secondly, I would say Think about what areas do you want to develop yourself in over the years you're in the workplace that will transfer to your retirement years. When you retire, you need to do something with your life. There is a lot of research out now. In fact, you'll see many books about do not retire, believe it or not. 
And the idea is that we need to be using our brains, we need to be thinking, we need to be challenged. It helps prevent dementia um, and several other things. So yes, keep, keep working, keep growing, developing, take advantage of all the courses. You know, just as if you were starting your career. You know, think back. How was I when I started my career? If you feel stagnant or if you feel, well, stagnant, that's a good word. What I say to you is be creative. I know there are times, you know, when I was an assistant, you do feel stagnant. There's nowhere to move within the organization. Um, the CEO's assistant is going to be there another 20 years. Um, maybe you're just, you're bored. I mean, when you do the same thing over and over and over, just like me, when I give the same speech 50 times, it's easy to get bored. But you know what? It's up to us. Think about how you can present information more creatively in your job. Maybe start a newsletter for the assistants in your department, just one or two pages. So basically it's up to us to add creativity and interest to the work that we do. Don't wait for someone else to lead you. Again, create it yourself. Great. Great. Okay, Joan. Well, what about um, for an assistant who has chosen being an assistant as their career path, and they've they've been doing this for a while, but they've um, gotten to the point, the success point in their career where they're now salary capped, and there's not really a lot of opportunity for them um, with like as far as salary goes, just exp expanding on that, but they still want this to be their career. What would you say to an assistant that's in that position? That's a really good question. Um, and I, I really thought about that. I'm glad I got to view that one a little ahead of time. Just First of all, salary caps are real. <laughs> they do exist. When I was an assistant, and just to give you a quick scenario, in that 20 years, I worked in 12 different companies in five states. Now, that wasn't because I was a bad assistant. It was because, as I said, I was hungry and I was eager to learn and I wanted to be the best. So if there was a good job opportunity for me, yes, I took advantage of it. Or I worked in big companies, so I was able to move within that company. And then we moved several times with my husband's career, so I had to change jobs. So I know for real, salary caps exist, and that happens in many professions, not just for the assistant. Um, organizations cap out every level. So, but what can you do? Um, one is I want to encourage you to continue to build your skills and expand your job because again you never know what tomorrow is going to bring it may bring you a wonderful opportunity and and lead you down another another path you may you know the company may downsize and then what and you're out of that job so you want to continue to build yourself also what i've noticed is companies are being more creative in how they compensate employees i've been reading a lot about that um, through my human resources association i know um, and, and even we try to get creative here um, it could be and i think back to my executives sometimes they were capped out with me so Maybe they gave me a, a gift certificate uh, to go to a dinner with my husband. I mean, there are all kinds of other ways that companies are being creative. Maybe you could work something out with your executive that will help you um, so that you do feel valuable because I know how important that is. Okay, Joan. Thank you. Um, let's see here. I've got a few more questions, and I've seen some coming through in the chat box, so I'm just synthesizing those down for you. As far mm -hmm. as um, us really creating our goals at this time of year, what tools would be useful? And we've even, I've just seen uh, a few questions popping up on the chat box as far as a template for goals. Um, so what tools, but then also assistants are finding themselves putting down the same goals year after year and they're wondering um, how they can spice things up or change their goals up a bit so they're not just finding themselves shooting for the same thing every year. Boy, those are great. I love those. Um, as far as the tools, um, I think you know, trying to develop some of your old, own tools. Now in World Class, or no, I'm sorry, in our Star Achievement Series, we spent half a day on goal setting. So you can create your own 
and what you could do is create maybe using a Word document is what I su would suggest and go through the steps that I mapped out for you earlier as far as looking at what skills you want to develop, where do you want to become you know, better, where do you want to grow, um, what do you want to, um, what was the word the assistant used yesterday in the class I was in, she said up level. So I love that word, what do you want to up level that you're already really good at and then set your target date because that's what we do when we do our class, set your target date. Now start to backtrack and look at the resources, um, how are you going to do that, look at the internet. Again, please, I want to encourage you to go to our website because we have a free e a free ebook that is really good called Turbocharge Your Career. And I think I might map some ideas out in there of what you could use. Also, I am super excited about Chrissy's um, line of, of educational, really career-changing tools that she has made available. I have reviewed every one of them and they are detailed out um, and it's an awesome collection that she has. And then I would imagine if you go again out onto the internet, you're not, don't only look up goal setting but um, search professional development plans, action plans, so use some other words. Now about getting creative with your goals, you've got to think outside the box. And, and what happens is you get, we get into that same rut and so how do you do that? Talk to other assistants. What are they doing? What are they setting for themselves? When I was an assistant, I used to look up to the CEO's assistants. I used to go to lunch with them. I asked them to go to lunch. I wanted to hear and see what were they doing? What skills did they need? So you really got to open your mind, listen to everybody. Again, I would talk to your executive. I guarantee your executive can think of some areas for you to develop. So I hope that gives a few ideas. Great, Joan. We only have a few minutes left for questions and I know we want to get to your um your secret weapon here at the end too and a few other items that we want to cover so uh, a couple other questions here or at least one of them um, how do we find a mentor? Oh this is great well what I used to do to find my mentors and what I still do to this day well first of all I have to know what my goals are I have to know um, where do I struggle and also what do I want to get better at and then what I do is I observe I watch everyone around me um, I fortunately I get to travel all over so I get to meet a lot of new people but I also belong to associations I belong to organizations um, I'm interested in everybody I meet I don't care where they are in fact last night when I was flying home I started talking to a gentleman in the line who wanted to know more about what I did and I started to ask him about what work he did so I even learned from people who are on the airplane but what you want to do is find that person who um, who you admire for what they've accomplished and then you ask them you say I really admire what you have done in this area uh, one example I could give you specifically and I'll give you the short version but when I started in the speaking professional speaking business in 1990 we had just moved to Virginia Beach I didn't know a soul but I joined um, the National Speakers Association and I asked, is there a group in Virginia Beach and can you give me the names of a few of your members that I can call? And they gave me the name of this woman. Her name was Linda Miles. Well, little did I know that Linda was a superstar woman who um, grew her business in a very short amount of time and was known all over the country. So I don't know this, right? And I called her and I said, you know, my name is Joan Burge. I just moved to Virginia Beach and I got your name. And, you know, Linda, would you mind meeting me and, and having lunch with me? I would really like some mentoring. I'm just starting in the speaking profession. Now, I was shocked she said yes. I mean, once I got to know what an amazing schedule she had. So anyways, we met for lunch. She knew that I wanted her to be my mentor. I didn't even have to say anything. And we had great conversations and then we would have lunch from time to time and every time we met for lunch she would say, okay Joan, pull out your list of questions. Let's get to it. 
So you have to ask people because people love to mentor because they want to help others and you know share what they've learned along the path, which sometimes is a very hard path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Joan. I am going to have to move on to the next part of our webinar here, because, and I hate to do that because there's so many great questions flowing in, but I'm happy that we are going to do this again in February and um, every month after that throughout the rest of the year so we can get to all sorts of questions because I think just the information is really rich and it's, um, I'm seeing that the assistants that are tuning in are really enjoying it. But don't leave just yet because Joan still has to share her career secret, secret with you. But remember that I mentioned earlier that we've got some exciting tools and Joan has hinted to that a little bit that are going to support you in building your professional development plan and getting your goals this year. So just for those of you who have tuned into the webinar and those of you who are watching on the replay link, we are excited to announce that we have very recently added the career changing product line brought by Chrissy Civic and for the next few days you will receive a special 25% discount on all of Chrissy's products so I'm gonna put that offer up there for you you'll see it um, if you're on a delay it may take just a moment so let's see here um, so that's 25% off on all of Chrissy's career changing products and that includes her product Build Your Professional Development Plan which is an e-workbook and you heard Joan talking about that earlier some of you were asking about what book that was that Joan had pulled that information from that was your Build Your Professional Development Plan e-workbook we also have Chrissy's Guide to Goal Setting and Goal Getting another e-workbook um, Build Your Professional Portfolio e-guide and over a dozen other titles and topics by Chrissy um, starting at just $24 so they're very affordable and you get an additional 25% discount for just a few days with that code PLAN25. Um, the coupon code is PLAN, P-L-A-N 25. So remember, uh, that special discount is good for only a few days, and you certainly are going to want to take advantage of it to help with your professional development planning this year, and you can do so at the officedynamics.com store, the officedynamics.com success store. And um, all right, I don't want to hold you up any longer because I know Joan wants to share with you her secret weapon for career success. Go ahead, Joan. Okay, and again, I just want to remind everybody, because I'm, I'm watching them on the right side here, that they didn't catch something we said, that you, there will be the recorded version. But here's my secret weapon that I used when I was an employee for 20 years. And what it, that weapon is, is I would say to myself, I am responsible for my career and my job security. It is not up to a company or to my boss to make my life wonderful and my job wonderful. Since the time I was 19, I knew job security lied within me. How did I know that? And what did I do about it is then I invested in myself. And I disciplined myself to do the hard stuff. And I do not have a college degree. I, but I learn and I learn. I'm a lifelong student. So, Investing in yourself, whether it's time or money, is the best investment you'll ever make. Don't leave your career up to chance. You've got to own it. You've got to create a solid plan, and you will reap the rewards. I promise you. Thank you so very, very much um, for being with us today, and please come back and be with us in January. We're going to have a great topic, The Resilient Assistant. Thank you, and have a great day.